my uh my mom got me this for for christmas she's so gosh darn supportive and you listen to mama peoples uh so subscribe doesn't say like, but do that as well. Anyway, I started a coding boot camp and it starts tomorrow and I'm pretty excited. This is the part where I'm like, hi, welcome. My name is Jeremiah Peoples. I'm a self-taught software engineer. I skimmed by that part, but for this video, the self-taught software engineering part is actually pretty important. So we're gonna unpack that just a little bit so that we can further you know, discuss what this boot camp is, who it's for, and so on and so forth. If this is your first video and you don't really know who I am, let me give you the 16 to 20 second uh, background of who I am. All right, I taught myself how to code in about three to four months with a online Udemy course. And then when I got home to my, my job, they had a offering for an internal transfer for a software developer. I'm like, I kind of know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I'll give it a shot. Boom, hop on that team. And they're like, okay, cool, cool, cool. You're cool. There's an experience and an opportunity out in LA. So I'm like, definitely. So I head out to LA and I create some space applications full stack with React and Kotlin and that was cool. That was with VMware, pair programming. That was dope. And then now I'm back and I'm making boot camps. So that's that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, that wasn't 28 seconds, but I tried. I tried. Anyway, so I'm back in Florida and I'm working with my team, which is a pretty cool team. There's like six of us and we are the innovation cell where our sole job is just to create amazing things. I have a pretty unique circumstance to where I don't come into work with a preset amount of features or things I need to do for a specific application. It's more of they empower all six of us to tackle whatever problems we see are the most pressing to our community and to our work center, which two years ago absolutely blew my mind. I got there and I was like, what do you want me to do with my hands? And he said, make something great. And I'm like, I don't know what that means, but okay. So in the early 1900s, there was this general, his name was General Patton, and he said, don't tell your people how to do something. Tell them what you want done and let your people surprise you with their results. And that's kind of how my team operates to where we have this big picture just to be innovative and to bring software development and automation to our organization. And we've had some pretty good success with just doing that, trying to be as innovative as possible and to tackle the problems that are closest and dearest to our hearts. One day I was live streaming on the YouTubes and my senior engineer, Greg, hopped on and he threw in the chat. He said, hey, Jeremiah, I know you got about a year left in this organization. What's your one big project? that you wanna do before you get out? And I, I got to thinking, I said, that is a good question, Greg. Now at that time, I didn't have a real answer for him, but a couple of days went by and I really thought about it. And I'm like, hmm, I think I want to put people on game. Like I wanna show them and teach them the skills needed to teach themselves how to code and be able to create amazing applications that streamline and automate some of their workflows that they struggle with on the day-to-day -day in their organization. As long as I can remember, teaching has been my passion. If I know how to do something, I'm going to try my hardest to teach someone else if it's like a valuable skill. It was like 2011, 2012, Gladiator came out and Maximus Decimus Meridus said, what you do in this life echoes in eternity. I know it was just a movie, but it really stuck with me. And I was like, hmm, how am I going to have a significant impact on the world with like my 80 years that I'm here? And once again, that brought me back to teaching. Like, I think that's the best way to do something that goes beyond yourself because you can teach one person and they can teach 10 and that person can teach 100 and so on and so forth. And I think it's a great way to, you know, do good things with the time we got on this earth. So once again, Greg, my senior engineer, like two years ago mentioned that he wanted like a, a roadmap, a, a pipeline, a, a, a camp to teach people how to code officially because when he brought me on the team, he was showing me a few things here a few things there but he wanted to do this on a massive scale but the problem with greg is he's he's really good at coding so he's always on a project doing projects for everyone so he didn't really have the time i was in between projects and courses at the time so i thought hey this is the perfect time to do that thing and once again my job is awesome i get to tackle the problems that are near and dear to my heart and that for me is helping other people become software developers and giving them the tools and the knowledge to make software solutions to the things that are plaguing them every single day. Now Flatiron School and Coding Dojo don't have anything to worry about. This course is directed mainly toward my associates, my fellow companions, my co-workers, and my organization. And my organization is a government organization of about 30,000 and I plan to make this course for all 30,000 of them. If any one of them ever had a want to learn how to code, we're going to be going over HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and 
teaching them the fundamentals of how to get started and how to create amazing applications. So I never really created a course before, so I didn't know how to start, but I knew what I wanted to teach them, right? HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, essentially an intro into web development. So I got to work on getting the coursework together. I was getting the HTML slides together, the presentations, the coding snippets, and then we're going to move to CSS. And then after that, roll to JavaScript. So getting all those lesson plans, coding snippets, playgrounds, GitHub repo set up took me about three weeks. And then I was on to my next task. Next up was the question of where would I teach these folks? Fortunately for us, we have a working partnership with a nonprofit foundation right outside of our gates. It's really an amazing foundation. Like kids after school come there and they learn how to like make robots and they fly drones or these drone courses and they're building these switches. It's a really cool place. And I'm glad it's like a nonprofit and a place for people to come and innovate and create and think. It's also like pretty snazzy. It reminded me of like the West Coast tech vibes, which was pretty cool to have in Florida. Bing, pow, yes. All right, space secured and we got a room for about 15 students, which is perfect. But like, how do we get the word out? And then I remembered, oh, I can write the codes, I guess. So me and my senior engineer paired real quick and within like two or three days, we fired up a website and it was gorgeous. Had all these transitions and beautiful color schemes. Anyway, it talked about what we wanted to do in the course, our roadmap, who we were, validation. So we talked about some of our successes that we've had creating applications with just these minimal languages. And bingo, bam, it's up and it's live. <laughs> I told my I told my senior engineer, once again, Greg, I was like, Greg, we can just have people email us if they want to come to the course. And the look he gave me, he was like, nah, we're gonna, we're gonna make a form for that. So we made a sign up form and Kind of nice because I rarely ever get to use PHP and I hooked it up with PHP. And now we got, you know, back and forth, email, subscribe chain, whatever, all that jazz hooked up and ready to go for all the people who want to sign up to go to the course. Boom. We announced the course and within 24 hours, we have all 15 students. I was really surprised on how many students applied so quickly. I wasn't expecting that much excitement to learn how to code, but... Alas, it was there. So there we go. We got our 15 students and a ton more that are interested in future courses if we have those. G freaking Willikers. This, uh, <laughs> this course took a lot of effort, research, and uh, design to get together, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's starting. Tomorrow's our first day of course, and um, me and Greg are teaching it. It's five days long because, you know, it's just an intro testing the waters of our, you know, style of teaching. So Monday we got HTML. Tuesday, we got CSS. Wednesday, Thursday, JavaScript, ES5, and ES6. And then on Friday, we have a capstone where they put it all together. So I am headed to bed, pretty nervous, pretty excited. It's like Christmassy, basically. But um, yeah, I will take you along with me on my first day, and I will see you tomorrow. All right, today's my first day of my coding boot camp that I've been working on for like the last month. Uh, I'm really excited to teach these new students. I think I have about 15 students for my first class. So that's gonna be fun. It's just like an intro into we'll develop it, intro into scripting. Uh, but I am running behind, so we gotta go. Those last five days were exhausting. So I just taught my last course, last uh, last capstone project was today, and um, 
That was a week for sure. It's been a long time since I learned a first coding language and I forgot just how frustrating it can be to try to learn that coding language, especially when you have it all crammed into one week. I felt so bad for them as well as trying to instruct them while being calm and transparent and trying to be clear and lay everything out and explain things. It was, it was a lot, but definitely uh, a good time. All in all, for this first course and trying to cram everything into one week, I'd say the course went pretty well. It wasn't an absolute train wreck that I was expecting for, you know, it being the first course. Like, the train made it to the station in one piece, and then the passengers got out of that train, and they um, made it to their destiny. I'm going too far with the train analogy. It was, a, it was a good first week for a course. I didn't expect to learn so much personally from teaching. Like, I learned a lot of about being a course director and an instructor and making my lessons approachable to a bunch of different types of students who learn a bunch of different types of ways. So that was very interesting um, notes to myself that I'm going to take and apply to the next course offering. Another thing that I learned about myself is how to have patience. I always would think back to when I was first learning how to code and my senior engineers who have been doing this for like 20 years slowed everything down and walked me through. This is a string, this is a number. Don't add those two together. So I tried to stress and practice that same amount of restraint, the same amount of calmness and relaxedness and patience with the students that had the same questions that I had two years ago. That whole patience thing is a skill within itself. Oftentimes I had to explain the same thing three or four different times each way in a slightly different format of explaining and it was amazing when that fourth or fifth time it finally clicked for them and they're like, oh, that makes sense. You should have just said that the first time. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, that was a really good uh, teaching experience when something finally clicked for my students. So my time in Los Angeles when I work with VMware, they were obsessed with like feedback. They did plus deltas at the end of every day to where you had to talk and say something positive about your experience pair programming and something negative. And I love that piece of feedback and growing every single day. So we brought that on over to my course in Florida. Senior engineer cooked up this uh, plus delta app real quick, threw it on our domain. And every single day before leaving, we would gather pluses and we could gather delta so that we could continue to improve and increase the quality of the course. So that was something I really enjoyed doing was uh, seeing how my teaching styles were bad and what teaching styles the majority of the class liked. I keep saying next course, next course, and that's because during us setting up the course, our bosses, 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 bosses. Essentially the president of our 30,000 people organization called a meeting with us, which is super unusual and you know as being one of 30,000 people that he's in charge of that you get a meeting with this individual. So Greg and I took that meeting obviously because he's our bosses, 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 bosses. So we walk into the room and his advisors are just you know already there posted up and I'm like am I in the am I in the right room? He ends up coming in and he sits us down and he's like hey I love this whole coding boot camp thing teaching people how to code and empowering them to solve their own problems with software solutions. It's amazing. He told us that he was going to help us and, and try to pump up this organization as much as possible. So now we're looking on seeing how we can scale this one week program to be something bigger, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And we're looking at getting someone to help out with recruiting, course directors, having another set of eyes on the slides that I made myself and making sure they're all crispy and good to go. So it's really amazing to be getting help and the support from my bosses, 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 essentially, you know, the president of my organization. So that's very exciting. So I'm really excited to take all of those plus delta feedbacks that we've got, the lessons learned from the course and apply them to the next course offering and try to teach just as many of my coworkers how to code so they can, you know, start making applications that help them out daily, you know, you know. When I first set out to make this coding boot camp, I didn't realize how much work it would be to set this whole thing up, but it's definitely rewarding and I'm really excited to lean in, create a bigger and better coding boot camp that, you know, offers a lot more content, a lot more skills to the students that are obviously hungry to learn how to code and learn how to develop. I have about 12 months left with this organization and I'm really excited to see where I can take this coding boot camp in those 12 months before I get out. If you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe to join me on my software development journey, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.